everyone, I am Genevieve Plains. I am the Cape Town Table Tennis um, Umpires Convener and I will be presenting a basic umpires course over a four part series. For the series, you would need the ITTF rulebook in conjunction with the ITTF handbook for officials. Uh, the links you can find down in the description below. Welcome everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at part two of the umpires course and um, we'll be looking specifically at the net the ball and the racket. The net assembly. The net assembly shall consist of the net, its suspension and the supporting posts including the clamps attaching them to the table. So the clamps at the end of the table which holds the net down is seen as being part of the net assembly. So if a ball should touch the clamps um, the ball is still in play, it's fine because it's part of the net assembly. The net shall be suspended by a cord attached at each end to an upright post which is 15.25 centimeters high. So the uh, the post itself the, the, is 15.25 centimeters high um, and the outside limits of the post being 15.25 centimeters outside of the sideline. So each um, post and clamp of the net is on each of the sidelines which is um, holding the table which is holding the net down on each end. Um, and also the net obviously runs parallel with the end line of the table. Um, the top of the net along its whole length shall be 15.25 centimeters above the playing surface. So the height of the net needs to be 15.25 centimeters. And it's the umpire's duty, or uh, if you are the only umpire, well, then it's your duty. But if you have an assistant umpire, it would be the assistant umpire's duty to use what we call a net measure. And we use the inside of the net measure to measure the height of the net and that needs to be 15.25 centimeters so we'll swing it onto the net and we'll measure the net to be 15.25 centimeters um, and also very important we spoke uh, about the cord that um, runs across the, the net we need to make sure that the tension that it's tight enough the net is tight enough it's not going to go loose um, during play the bottom of the net along its own length shall be as close as possible to the playing surface um, and the ends of the net shall be attached to the supporting post from top to bottom. So it's very important that you make sure that the net is no um, space at the bottom of the net, that it is on the table um, and it's covering the whole of the board. The ball. The ball shall be spherical with a diameter of 40 millimeters. So if you take the measurement around the ball, it should be 40 millimeters. The weight of the ball should be 2.7 grams and the ball shall be made of celluloid or similar plastic materials and shall be white or orange um, and matte. Okay, so it needs to be the color of the ball, cannot be pink, it cannot be um, green um, or any other color other than white or orange. The racket, the racket may be any size, shape or weight as long as the blade is flat and rigid. 85% of the blade's thickness needs to be made of natural wood. An adhesive layer within the blade may be reinforced with fibrous materials such as carbon fiber, glass fiber or compressed paper but shall not be thicker than 7.5% or a total thickness of 0.35 millimeters whichever is smaller. Now the side of the blade used for striking shall be covered with either a pumpled rubber uh, with pumples outwards having a total thickness including the adhesive of not more than 2 millimeters or it shall be covered with a sandwich rubber with pimples inwards or outwards, um, including the adhesive, not more than four millimeters. So how does the umpire determine whether the rubber is, uh, how thick the rubber is? So firstly, what we need to establish is that the, the blade, the racket needs to be approved. And how do we know whether it's approved? There's an ITTF logo there on the rubbers. And then we also need to check on the approved list of rubbers, whether the rubber is on there. Um, and then the umpire goes ahead by checking the, um, the thickness of the rubber and we do so by using our net measure. So at the edge of the net measure is your 4 millimeter edge and so if you were to determine the thickness of a sandwich rubber you would actually just put it over the rubber like that and here we can see that the sandwich rubber is actually um, approved the, and, it's, and it's legal. The thickness of the rubber is legal because it's not more than four millimeters and so you would do the same for the pumpled rubber. Uh, the pumpled rubber obviously being off of the four millimeter which is two millimeters. The covering may extend up to uh, but not beyond the limits of the blade except that the part that's nearest to the handle and grip by the fingers may be left uncovered or covered with any material. So basically the rubber should not extend beyond the blade. Um, it could um, extend 
two millimeters um, beyond the blade is still accepted um, but further than that it's not more than that is not so they're also talking about at the bottom of the racket where we hold the racket okay the angle um, this may be uncovered which is this area over here or there may be any sort of other material in that area so the blade and any layer within the blade or any layer of covering of material or adhesive on a side used for striking ball shall be continuous and even thickness. So the, it's the umpire's duty also to see whether the, um, the rubber is level. So we check for that. Okay, we check that it's level and um, that it is continuous, the thickness that's got the same thickness. Um, through, uh, throughout the racket so we don't only check over here for thickness but we also check at the top of the racket for thickness and we'll do so on the other side as well okay um, the surface of the covering the, the surface of the covering material on the side of the blade so basically the the, the striking surface uh, is it needs to be covered if it's not covered then we need to shade it in either red or black and the shaded part of the racket if you shading the part of the racket and there's no material you can't strike the ball with that area so before you start the match what you need to do is um, it's important for you to present your racket to the umpire uh, and also to your opponents. That's important. You would have no choice that you have to present it to them. Or when you change a racket during a match, um, that also you then you need to um, present that to the umpire. And the only time we do know that we can actually change a racket is when a racket is damaged and it's approved by the umpire or the referee that you can change um, it. So that brings us to the end of part two. Thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm.